Hey, Daimonic here. There seems to be two forces that guide our evolution in this world we live in. The force of novelty and the force of habit. Habit, as we all know, is the guiding force of culture and tradition. Culture is not your friend. As we repeat the same actions over and over again, we tend to become better at them. Our powerful DNA can store a tremendous amount of information, allowing us to master whatever path we choose. But novelty, on the other hand, is a mysterious energy that sparks up new actions and behaviors, new mutations, new systems, new evolutions, and new creative paths for humanity to embark on. And that's the topic of this video, novelty and habit in the subject of personal economics. Now mankind has used many different types of currency throughout history. The earliest records of monetary transactions are found in Sumerian clay tablets 6,000 years old. Since then, humanity has used precious metals as a currency because of their rarity and practical use, but given that it's difficult for one to mine, mint and protect his own coins, individuals organize governments and private interest groups to take control of that process. The first step into understanding the current monetary system is learning the difference between value and currency. Value is a subjective term, but its closest definition is usefulness. For example, water is valuable to a person who's thirsty but not to a man in abundance. Using the same analogy, gold has no value to a dinosaur, but to a man, gold has many uses, one of which is gold is extremely effective at making pussy wet. No lie. All jokes aside, gold is highly valuable because of its use as one of the most conductive metals on the planet, making it indispensable for electronics, space technology, and for its rare, everlasting nature. Currency, on the other hand, has no practical uses whatsoever. In fact, money is the lowest form of value because it can only be used to purchase something that has actual importance to you. Like most northern powers, the creation of fiat currency was brought about by war. A perfect example of this is the First World War. The British abandoned the gold standard to be able to take in loans from a private bank in order to pay for the war. After the war was won, with the British debt as a percentage of the GDP at a high level, they reintroduced the gold standard in 1925. With the arrival of the Great Depression, the British ended the gold standard again in 1931, never to reintroduce it again, making the British pound a fiat currency. And in the USA, the gold standard was abolished in August 15 of 1971 when Nixon prohibited the act of redeeming US dollars in exchange for gold, thus making the US dollar a fiat currency. Fiat is a term derived from the Latin meaning, let it be done, used in the sense of order, decree or resolution. Therefore, fiat currency is value derived from government regulations and not from intrinsic value. So what does that mean exactly, value by decree? It means by the words of the government. Currency can be created out of thin air, by the national or private banks to serve whatever purpose they deem useful for themselves. To learn more about currency, I definitely recommend watching the Zygast Addendum by Peter Joseph. The vast history of fiat currencies is filled with more failures than the 17 seasons of The Biggest Loser. This is no <laughs> laughing matter. All fiat currencies fail. They are designed to do so. It's a game of musical shares. Which generation gets to suck balls, they ask you. Play the music. It shouldn't surprise you that many World Bank leaders have been quoted saying that they make more money in a day of war than an entire year of peace. Chaos is a ladder to them. They are money laundering rat cocksuckers. Trusting the World Banks will lead to more of the same. It's clear to anybody that exercises their power of intuition that placing your faith 
on corrupt institutions is not the way to go forward for mankind. Thus, technology, powered by the force of novelty, comes to the stage to bring forth something new to the world. Cryptocurrencies are an exciting prospect in fixing the issues we currently have. So why are cryptocurrencies so powerful as a technology? Cryptocurrencies are designed to be finite, and one can easily find out what is the current amount of specific cryptocurrency in circulation at any given time. As you can clearly see, we live in a finite solar system that only has a certain quantity of resources, thus having a monetary system that is based on infinite growth is not only criminal, but highly destructive to the planet, society and its ecosystems. There has always been a demand for a technology that allows one individual to send currency to another individual without a third party taking advantage of the transaction. In fact, if you want to send funds to your family abroad and you choose to use a bank or a private interest group such as Western Unit, you have to pay a ridiculous fee and the transaction takes too long to be processed, sent and delivered so at the end of all that, the person who you send money to receives but a fraction of the amount that you intended. The reality is that banking institutions are highly ineffective at sending and receiving funds because they always bring predators. They prey on the poor, the uninformed, and the members of society who do not have the means to make their own money. It's a system that brings dependent members of society restricting their financial freedom. Cryptocurrency technology allows you to send any payment of any amount to any person anywhere virtually instantaneously, creating a platform where all people in the world can trade goods and services without government and banking corruption intervention, effectively countering all their devices and technologies of slavery and centralized economic oppression. So in the everlasting battle between good and evil, love and hate, freedom and control, novelty and habit, Bitcoin finally steps into the field of battle. The current monetary system runs on fiat currency devoid of value and character. Cryptocurrencies in mixed martial art terms are a perfect counterpunch and an effective knockout blow to the world banks, but although they are rocked, they are not finished yet. We have to finish them. So here is where you make your decision. Are you going to place your faith in the past or in the future? Simple question.